If you're looking for Ultimate Team Coins, check out FIFACoinsTank.com in the description below and use the code TREY for 5% off your order. Enjoy the video. What is up guys, t all Day here and welcome back to my Fulham career mode. This is episode number 22 and in the last episode I asked you guys for a bit of help on who I should sign and the player you guys decided was indeed Ashley Westwood. So we're going to go ahead and accept that offer. He's kind of the player I wanted anyway. I was a bit concerned because he was a CDM and I think we kind of need more cams but I think with NTEP's ability to play there as well as Saive, I think Berahino can even play there. I think we'll be fine with that so we're going to go ahead and reject Acosta. Now I do have a bit of money left. I could indeed afford Sorg if I wanted to but we are going to head over to my shortlist because we do have a bit of money. I'd rather, I need to change this really fast to around, you might as well just go right there. So with the amount of money I have left, as I was saying, we're going to not search players. That's definitely not what we're going to do. We are going to try to sign someone else on a pre-contract, Hiroki Sakai, who is, you know, better rated than Sorg and is on the same amount of wages and is worth more. His value is 4.7 mil, whereas Sorg was like 1.2. So I'd rather have him, uh, Sakai, and if I'm honest, I'm not going to give him a roll. Uh, maybe just go up to like 22 just to make sure that we get him in because, you know, he is better rated. He's more attack-minded as well. Sorg has, I think, um, low, low high work rates, if I'm not mistaken. We'll compare the two uh, and see... Uh, yeah, medium medium for Sakai, low medium for Sorg. So I, I I think I'd rather have Sakai if I'm honest. They're basically the same player, except Sakai seems a bit more strong than Sorg. But you know they have they're pretty similar. I think the only reason we'll go for Sakai is just because he's worth a bit more money. So if he gets a little angry that he's not playing that much, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, we can just sell him on for you know more money. So that's perfectly fine with me as well. I think I'm going to try to go back in for Harry Kane. It doesn't look like I can from here because, you know, I, I think a lot of you wanted me to sign him, but I I kind of don't really need a striker. I think we have Ensep who can play there. We have Berahino. We have Saive. We have Dembele, who I'd like to give more chances to, definitely. So, actually, I think we're going to we're gonna stay off of him. And even if, you know, we couldn't afford him, I could always go for Sadio Diallo, who is a striker and is 20000 on the wages as well. So, we could afford him on a free and get him next year. But I think we're going to hold off on that for now. Like I was saying, we're just going for... Um, Sakai and then we're pretty much set at the striker position but let's go ahead and delete these emails we don't really need them anymore and then I will simulate forward and see if we get a response for Sakai well we didn't get anything back in time that's very interesting to see Ben Yedder is one of the top deals and the latest deals got Luis Adriano going to Villarreal but regardless we didn't get anything back in time. It was like two days worth of simulating and we didn't get anything back. So that's a bit disappointing. We're going to go ahead and mix up our starting 11 though because we do kind of need a different formation, I think. I'm not sure where I could play Westwood in that formation. So we might have to mix it up. So uh, <laughs> we just need to find one that I think could work. This one, that's intriguing actually. Let's go look at the five, 451. Fofana, I'd rather have... Nah, we couldn't do this. We couldn't because Saive isn't really a center mid. Ah, oh, this is frustrating. Very, very frustrating. This one might work, actually. Um, it's like the same thing, though. I, oof. This is really, really frustrating. I don't know what formation to pick. I'd rather not have one with two wingers, if I'm honest. I don't think there's any down here that aren't. Um, well, this one, actually. This one's intriguing. Um, we could put him here. Ensep I'd rather have down here. Fofana I'd rather have on the side. Saive would go up here, and he's more right-sided player, so we'll put him there. And set Berahino, Saive, Fofana, Vera, two. Roberts off for Westwood. And then Westwood, I think we'd play in the middle like that. I think I like that a bit more than what the for the formation we had before. I'm not... No, oh, he's more of a left-footed player. Never mind. We'll play him there. That is intriguing. Uh, I'd, I'd like to play... What's his face? More Pat Roberts, but this formation I think would be fine. We're going to try it out anyway. Hopefully it works for us, but I will see you guys in a second for the starting 11s. Well, I just went through all of the starting intro cinematics, and they didn't show the starting lineups, which is annoying, but here's our starting 11. As you can see, Vera 2 and NTEP will most likely have to come off at some point during the game. Not quite sure what Stokes lineup is, but I guess we'll find out as the game goes along. Straight from kickoff, Henri Saive, new signing. Let's go Saive. 
Oh, get there. Berahino. Oh, man. Saive getting an assist on his debut. And Saito Berahino, our new number nine striker. Number not. You know what I'm talking about. Fuck. I just fucked that up so horrifically. But Saive, man, passes over to Berahino. And our new lone striker is what I was trying to say. Now that Ben Yedder's gone, our main man up front gets a goal. Go Gat. Go Gat. Oh, he's still going by. You know what's sad is he's our only four-star skiller in the squad. And he's going to low drive this one. Ah! Saive. Ooh. -hoo. Walters. Crosses over. Breck Shea. Holy shit. Spare Hino. Oh, somehow got through. Berahino, and he gets his double right before halftime. Saito Berahino with his second goal of the game. I don't know how the defender didn't clear that. And we're able to score 2-0. It is halftime. We're bringing on Tom Carroll and Jack Grealish for Entep and Vera 2. Like I was saying, we need to take them off just so they don't get injured. I got Michu in the box. He puts that one near post. I was expecting Blanco to save that one. 2-1, they're right back in this. Straight from kickoff, my boy Jack Grealish. Can we get a goal like last season? Can we get a goal like... Oh my god, that was close! One last change. We're going to bring on Dan Byrne. We're going to move Gat over here, I think. Saiv is a bit more defensive-minded, surprisingly, with his high defensive work rate. So I think we're going to go like this. Switch those two. Have Byrne there. Actually... We might as well just go like this and have Pogba since he can't play midfield. I like that a lot more. We're bringing Burn in just to deal with their, you know, they're probably just going to whip the ball in over and over again. So hopefully nothing happens in the next five minutes. There we go. Berahino, can we get one last goal? Seal the deal. Go, Jack Grealish. Go. Nice work. Fake shot back. Slot this one in. He put it wide. Oh, my. Thankfully, that Grealish miss didn't come back to haunt us. 2-1 on the final score away at the Britannia Stadium. Definitely a very hard place to win at. And Saive looks very happy with that result on his debut, getting a win, as well as Westwood and Fofana all getting wins on their debut. And all I got to say is after this performance, I am in love with this team. Just playing that game, this team is a lot better than teams I've had in the past. Let's move back on to the transfer window. Still nothing back from Sakai, but we do get another transfer offer for Entep. <laughs> Are, are you kidding me, Leverkusen? Oh, man, that, that's just a straight-up reject. No, that, that, that has to be a joke. <laughs> well, it took him about a week to come back, but apparently he loves living where he's living, which is, you know, understandable. A lot of, lot of Japanese footballers play in Germany. So we'll go up to 27 with 20% length for no squad roll because we don't want to send him that. Come on, Sakai, come on. And he finally accepted it, so... That's a good little signing. I think we're going to save the rest of our money, if I'm honest, because we don't really need to spend any more money. We have a pretty solid squad now with all the signings we've made. It's pretty, it has a pretty good amount of depth, if you ask me. It's pretty solid. I think goalkeepers is our only real weakness, but Blanco, give him a season or two and he'll be up there. But I don't know. We might... Let me see, actually. Let's go look over at our transfers. I don't think I'll have enough money to bring in a really top-notch goalkeeper. We won't. We'll be able to bring in Bats on a pre-contract, but he's not really the keeper I'm after. I'd rather have Anthony Lopez, and he's we've, we've signed way too many, uh, what you might call it this year, way too many Lyon players. So we signed Taliso. We signed uh, Fofana, obviously. Taliso, I actually found out is 74 rated in head-to-head -head now. He got an upgrade. He was 67 when we signed him, 67 when we sold him, and he's a 74 in head-to-head. -head. Imagine if we signed him now. That would be ridiculous, but we're going to go ahead and go over to our youth staff. I think we're going to send them out. I don't think I've sent them out in a while. Yeah, they are some pretty shit scouts, though. So do I waste our money and sign this guy? How much money do we have? We have a decent budget, but I don't think I'd be able to send him out anywhere if we use that. Yeah, in fact, we wouldn't be able to. Ah, oh, that's very disappointing. Um, I, I really need to, well, you know, F it. We're signing him. We're going to bring that scout in. We'll send him away when he comes in. Um, I think I'll send these guys away as well, but I'll send them out there, and I'll see you guys in a few seconds. If we get any other transfer offers, if not, I will see you guys uh, for our next game.
Another transfer offer for NTEP, and it looks like his price has gone down significantly in the eyes of other clubs. We'll just count off for 28. I'd really rather not sell him, though, at this point in time. We wouldn't be able to bring anyone in, but whatever. <laughs> they, they literally went up by 400,000. That is... <laughs> That is a complete joke. Bye bye. We did get a youth squad monthly report update on our players in our youth squad. So far, Tor Andre Nilsson looks pretty decent, actually. Looks like he has a bit of pace to him based on his strengths. But 73 to 81 potential isn't the greatest. But, you know, I say it over and over again he can outgrow any potential that you, you know, if you play well with the players. 53 to 59 overall as of right now. Once you hit May 1st and go past May 1st, if you didn't know this, their uh, their overall does increase. So hopefully he doesn't turn 16 until after May 1st and doesn't ask to get promoted to the first team squad. So if we do hit May 1st and then he turns 16, I will definitely promote him. I think he'd be a pretty decent backup. And honestly, I'd rather have him than Zhao because Zhao hasn't really done much for our team. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Transfer deadline date indeed ended. And uh, apparently Dembele is thankful he's getting so much time in the first team, even though I've only played him like once, but whatever. Before we jump into our next game, as you can see, Nathan Redmond is ready to return from injury. I won't be playing him in the next game, but it's I'm kind of, you know, wondering where I'll put him in this squad because I really, really liked our lineup we had out last time. He might just have to come off the bench now and maybe come in when players are tired because he's not a first teamer anymore based on what we had last time, but... Let's jump in to see the starting 11s for the game against West Brom. Well, here's our starting 11 for the match. It's the exact same lineup we walked up with last time. I was very impressed with how it played. And we now got the home debut of Fofana, Westwood, and Saive. So we need to get the three points in this one in front of the home fans. Here's West Brom's lineup, and I definitely think it's beatable. And Achibe up front is going to be hard to deal with. But I think other than that, it's not that you know difficult of a lineup. Jakob and Malumbu may be difficult midfield, but we got this. Ntep takes it away. Go Ntep. Finesse it. Foster. Gamboa. Ah, oh, Saive, you gotta strike that man. Oh no, Blanco goes through. Oh man, Blanco almost scored an own goal. What are you doing? Verahino. Vera two. Oh, and he puts it just wide. Nice strike, nice chance. Nice pass. Saive. Oh, wow, he just went through and he tucks it in on his home debut, getting a goal. Henri Saive. Oh, man, that's wonderful. He doesn't have hair in game for whatever reason. He does in real life, but he does have a real face, which is cool to see. I love players that have real faces in this game. They always, for some reason, seem to play better than players that don't, with the exception of NSF, of course. But still, I was expecting him to strike it from outside the box, just outside the box, and he went all the way through and tucked it in. 1-0. Doran's on the left-hand side. This is the last chance for West Brom. Oh, God, no. It goes out for a corner. We have one sub left, so we might as well take off someone a bit smaller. Westwood is pretty small. I think we'll bring on Dan Byrne. No, where is Byrne? Oh, yeah, I had to take him off of my subs because Redmond came back. More. We'll bring on more just to mark. Hopefully that helps a little bit. We can also switch Fofana and Gat. I don't think that will help with anything in the marking department, but at least for bringing on someone. Foster, it looks like he'll be coming up. No, he's going to stay back, I guess. Who's marking who? Hutchinson, Olsen, and each be Fofana. That's no, no. Gat can't be guarding an each be. Get that out. No. And Achibe. Over to Malumbu. Gardner. In the box to Gamboa. No, why'd you switch guys on me? Thank you, Ruben Blanco just cleared away. Let's get the full three points. There we go. One nil the final score against West Brom. And a very, very deserved win. Would have liked to score more than one, but I will definitely take the three points. Lego. Before I end this episode, we're going to be changing a few of the numbers around. Gat's going to go to 22, and Westwood is going to go to 15, which was Gat's number. Um, unless I think of a different one. You guys can leave suggestions for numbers in the comment section down below if you so wish. But for now, I think that that's pretty solid. Gat 22. Fofana, I'd rather have as number 6. Because that's his number for Leon. And he can gladly take that number, it looks like. Vera 2, 26. I might change his up a little bit. Um, in fact, we're going to make him number 8 and change Jack Grealish around. Number 11 works for Grealish, actually. I like that a lot more. 
Yeah, I think that's set. Maybe NTEP a different number, but no, not really a number I can give him. I think, actually, we'll change NTEP to number 12, and then Blanco we can change to number 1. I, I like that a bit more. If you guys want to leave any suggestions for numbers in the comment section down below, feel free. But I think those are that's a pretty solid you know kit number type thing. But if you guys want to leave suggestions, like I've been saying, leave them, leave them in the comment section down below. Regardless, this is the end of the episode, so I very much hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode of this. My name is T-Ray All Day, and I'm out.